welcome to my YouTube channel, The Naughty Giraffe. My name's Glenna and uh, yeah, this is my little spot on the internet where I talk about my knitting and things that I'm making. If it's your first time here, welcome. And if it's not your first time, then welcome back. Oh, without fail, every time I, I forgot to check the time, there goes my bird clock. There's always a clock going off in my episodes, it seems. Um, yeah, I have a lot of clocks and a lot of giraffes around my house. So, uh, I have lots to talk to you about today. I've got, um, two finished objects. Actually, well, one of them's mostly finished. <laughs> You'll see. Um, and several works in progress and some new acquisitions and that I'm about to cast on. And I've got some spinning too. So um, yeah, lots to talk about today. I will start off with what I'm wearing, which is um, my first finished object. It's the Soldatna by Caitlin Hunter. Um, I cast this on, when did I cast this on? <clears throat> Back on January 23rd, I cast it on. Um, I used a uh, 4.5 millimeter needles for the main work um, and uh, it actually it called for I think it was like 3.75 but uh, it's supposed to be knit in uh, a DK weight yarn and I ended up using a sport weight yarn um, so in order to get gauge I had to go up to a 4.5 millimeter needle and I was worried that the stitches might be too big or see-through or whatever but no it just turned out perfectly um, I was very happy with it I uh, what did I use I used uh, Malabrigo um, our what's it called Arroya Ar Arroya for um, for some of it in the color Reflecting Pond and um, Arapi. And then I used this other yarn called Sueno Haiku. Haiku. I'll put it all in down below so you can see. <laughs> um, in the color Corny. And then I also, the purpley color here is all um, sock yarn that I hand dyed in a workshop that I did um, at my local yarn shop or one of my local yarn shops, um, Kelowna Yarn and Needlecraft. They had a workshop, I believe it was last summer or the summer before, and I knit up some sock yarn in it and um, used that. So um, I made quite a few modifications while I was doing it. Uh, for starters, if you're familiar with the Soldatna, You'll know that it's got those uh, like V shapes or going down. Um, see if I can point out where they are right here. Uh, normally it's all done in the one color, but I was very I was worried that the blue um, that I had chosen um, that there wasn't enough contrast between it and the turquoisey green color. And I was afraid that they weren't going to show up properly. So I did the bottoms of the V's in the purple color. Um, I put quite a bit of the purple color and I changed colors a lot where from the pattern, what the pattern recommended. I stuck with the chart doing the, you know, doing the pattern. I just changed up what, uh, what color I was using quite often because I wanted to make sure that it showed up well. Um, also, um, I knit the size, I believe it was the size two that I knit. However, the size two, um, the arms, there was no way I, that was gonna work for me. I'm, I'm very big through, through here, through shoulder area. And so instead of casting on, I think it called for something like nine stitches under the arms, I put in 20 um, in order to get what I needed. And then as I started trying it on, it was, it was like massive. <laughs> and I, so I had to start shrinking it down, but luckily the pattern repeat for the color part, um, for the color work in the, in the main body part, it's like, a, a four stitch repeat. So I was able to take off two stitches and then two stitch uh, one row and two stitches the next row. And it didn't interfere at all with the pattern. 
So that worked out well. Um, when I had finally finished it, I was, uh, I, it was still smaller than it, than I wanted it sort of, but I have used the Malabrigo yarn before. I, I made my Trinigan um, sweater in this and I remember how much it grew when I blocked it. So I wasn't too concerned. Um, it started off as being like 17 inches from shoulder to, to here. Um, and then by the time I'd finished blocking it, it was up to 22 inches. So it, it grew a lot. And the same as the width, the width went from 15 inches to 17 inches wide. So giving me a 34 inch, which gives me, you know, a fair bit of, of, ease, which is what I was looking for. Um, I have come to the conclusion, however, <laughs> since knitting this, that I am, you know, I'm in my 60s now and um, I'm not sure that I want to wear a crop top on its own without something underneath it. I thought that I could probably wear it with a skirt and it would be fine. Um, but when I lift my arms up, you could see where it would be showing skin. I've got a, I have a t or an undershirt on underneath right now. And um, so I am thinking I need to maybe expand my wardrobe a little bit and get some dresses that I can wear it over top of. I think that would work really well or just pull my skirt up a little higher <laughs> or don't lift my arms up. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to be restricted by my clothing, but uh, uh, the Malabrigo is super, super soft. It's a super wash, so it's, you know, it is very soft and I, I let it soak for, oh, I think three hours in the, uh, in the yarn wash. So it's, yeah, it feels great against skin. There's no problem that way of, for wearing it. I just need to find some some things I can wear it with and I think it's going to be the perfect spring top. I'm I'm really looking forward to wearing it. So the construction is a circular yoke. It is knit from the top down, um, picking up stitches as you go. All of the uh, patterned work is done on a chart. It's not written out at all, but uh, the chart's really easy to follow. I uh, filled my chart in with colored pencils. I printed it up in black and white and then filled it in with colored pencils so that I would be able to know uh, what color was what. And then I put stitch markers in between every section. So uh, yeah, I don't know what more to say. If other modifications I made was um, I did a, a twisted rib um, at, the, at the collar instead of, I believe it called for a two by two and I did a twisted rib. And um, I did an Italian bind off for the sleeves and the bottom. I don't remember what it was that, that it called for, for the bind off, but um, I know I just, I've become an Italian bind off uh, fanatic at this point. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm binding everything off that way because I love the way that it stretches and just looks so nicely finished when it's done. You can see in the arm here, it's just, it's um, it, like it has a nice give. Um, yeah, I can't say enough about it. Just really thrilled. So overall, I, I love the pattern. It, um, it's well written, easy to follow, and I do think I'm going to have to make another one. Uh, I would like to make one um, for Christmas in red. I think that it would be a really nice Christmas sweater. Um, so anyway, yeah, that is the Soldatna by Caitlin Hunter. So that is item number one. So, uh, finished object number two is Maisie the pig. Um, <laughs> I have her, I have finished making her, but uh, she still needs some clothes. So, um, she was uh, from the book, The Knitted Animal Friends. 
and um, yeah, she's going to be a, a, a birthday present for my stepdaughter who used to collect pigs when she was younger and has stopped collecting pigs and asked people not to give her any more pigs, <laughs> which I can kind of relate to because I'm the same way with giraffes. I've asked people not to give me any more giraffes, but they still do. And um, yeah, so anyway, so I thought that she would be okay with Maisie the pig. Um, Cause yeah, just, I thought she's a pilot for WestJet and I thought it would be something that if she wanted to, you know, do something fun, like Maisie just folds right up and could go into a suitcase or something. If she wanted to bring something to take pictures that, that, you know, I know they did a funny thing, her and a friend did a funny thing with a little gnome where they took pictures of it everywhere. So I thought it would be, you know, maybe Maisie the pig could travel with her and it would be something fun. Um, modifications, I, uh, well, I'll start off. I knit Maisie in um, bamboo pops on um, 2.75 millimeter needles. And uh, the pattern is written completely flat where you're supposed to seam everything. And so I modified that by knitting everything in the round. I did absolutely everything in the round. Um, the head, you can see it's, um, yeah, right here is where I did have to seam it up in the back. But um, yeah, it, it was very easy to just switch it to knitting in the round. The only thing I really struggled with with Maisie was her tail. Um, it's, I ended up just doing an I cord and putting a, uh, a string through it to, to give it a pull so that it would curl. The pattern for the tail, honestly, I think I cast it on and ripped it out at least three or four times before I threw my hands in the air and went, ah, <laughs> and decided to just do the I cord and it's turned out okay. So anyway, so this is Maisie. I just sewed little buttons on for her eyes and um, yeah, all she needs is some clothes so that she, uh, she'll be finished. Um, hopefully in time for my stepdaughter's birthday, which is coming up early March. So um, yeah, so that's Maisie. I'll hopefully have a picture of her dressed <laughs> in my next episode. So I have a couple of works in progress. Uh, first off, I'm making a pair of fingerless mitts. I seem to, I don't know what it is, but I'm always <laughs> losing my mitts. And um, yeah, I have, I have, right now I'm wearing um, one from two different pairs on each hand at the moment when I'm out walking. So I decided that I would use the same yarn that I used for my um, my shift that I made, uh, Andrea Mowry's shift. I, I made that in the, um, the Marlowe, uh, Manos del Uruguay, it's a sport weight yarn. Um, and so I have started, I've used the color denim for the cuff, and then I'm doing the hand in the color chili. Uh, my original plan was I wanted to do the thumb in the gold because uh, those are the three colors I used in the shift. But uh, unfortunately, I forgot when I started doing the increases for the thumb, I, I forgot to switch color. And I, I don't know how I would go back and forth knitting in the round or get that in anyway. So, so I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna manage the color at the moment, but as you can see, I've got the cuff done and I have got the increases done for the thumb. Um, but yeah, this is just the first one, so it's, yeah. Um, I'm using a pattern that I wrote up for fingering weight yarn, so um, that I realized that when I wrote the pattern, it's, it's in Ravelry, <laughs> it was the only pattern I have in Ravelry. It was my first time writing up a pattern and I just made it a free pattern. I called it Glenna's Fingerless Fingering Weight Gloves, or Glenna's Lena's fingering weight, fingerless gloves. Yeah, I think that's what I called it. Anyway, um, I just made it a free pattern and it's a good job that <laughs> nobody's had to pay for it in case they have trouble with it. But um, it's, uh, yeah, in the pattern I wrote it up as the name says for fingering weight, not for sport. Um, 
but uh, it's I realized that I had used a sport weight yarn when I made the first pair that I wrote the pattern off of. <laughs> um, I had made a, I have made a pair with sock yarn since, and they're tighter, um, but they fit. They fit snug and nice. But uh, anyway. I digress. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, these are knit on 2.5 millimeter needles, um, knit in the round magic loop, as you can see. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, and that's really about all I have to say for those is they are underway and I'm hoping to have them done soon because our weather's supposed to change again shortly. Okay, so next on the list of my works in progress is the, what's it called? The Max Baby Cardigan uh, with cabled front. Um, this is a free pattern that you can find on Ravelry. Um, I am knitting it with uh, sock yarn, um, two strands of sock yarn held together. One of them is, um, by Fat Marmot, and the other one is one that I hand dyed in the same workshop that I did the purple in. So, um, yeah, here I'll show you. This is the skein of the Fat Marmot sock yarn. It's just gorgeous. Uh, and, oh, it's caught in my yarn ball. <laughs> my yarn ball there. Maybe I'll just show it to you in the yarn ball. It's a little easier there. That's my. That is my hand dyed that I just rolled into a ball. I can tell that was back a couple of years ago that I did that workshop because it was before I bought my, uh, my yarn winder. Um, anyhow, the sweater is, I'm, I'm liking it, but I'm feeling like the cables are being wasted on it. It's very hard to see the cables unless you unless you stretch the fabric and then and then you can see them um they just kind of get lost um in the with all the the uh, speckles going on in the sweater and just because the pattern it only you know how like usually with cables you'll get a row of two pearl stitches before the cable so that it it shows it pops better this only has one purl stitch on either side of the cable and so it makes it very it makes it hard to see so um, if I knit this sweater again I think I will modify the pattern to put two purl stitches on either side um, as you can see it's a raglan increase and um, yeah it's knitting up very quickly uh, I did do some modifications <laughs> on this as well because the I found the cable to be just too spaced out. I, I I I left the first one, which was you know probably lazy of me, but it was it was very long. You can see how long it it is. Um, so I shortened the cables by by two rows so that they're they spin more. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, so that is uh, about about it. Um, I don't know whether the baby's going to be a boy or a girl yet, so that's why I chose this color so that I can. Um, I'll just put like bright pink buttons down the front if it's a girl, and if it's a boy, I'll do some navy blue buttons or or some wood buttons, or maybe I'll just do wood buttons for either. It doesn't matter, but. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's, I love knitting baby clothes. I'm a wannabe grandmother and um, yeah, they just knit up so quickly. I, I really enjoy making baby clothes. Okay, so uh, my next whip is a pair of socks. Um, this is actually the second sock of a pair. Um, knit on 2.25 Shiagu, um, Magic Loop. Uh, I am using the color Oro for the cuff, heel, and toe. Um, it's by Malabrigo. It's their super sock yarn. And the main color is a yarn by a company called Ginger Snap that's based out of Calgary. And I can't remember the colorway. It's something to do with an old um, 
woodsy or something I think it's called uh, I'll put it down below so you can see um, but yeah these are coming along I'm like I said I'm on the second sock I'm not sure what I have done with the first sock <laughs> I do have a first sock done somewhere and I'm hoping I can find it <laughs> or else it'll be the first sock. But uh, yeah, I, um, I've decided that I would make them longer this time round. Um, just a sec, I'm going to go find the other sock because it's bugging me. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> well, apparently my other sock has run away. Um, perhaps with my fingerless mitt that I'm missing. Um, I thought socks only disappeared in the dryer, but I guess I'm wrong. Uh, it must have fallen out of my knitting bag, either while I was walking and um, knitting while I was hiking, or um, yeah, I'm hoping it's in the car or somewhere, <laughs> or maybe that I left it at the Fiber Arts Guild that I belong to when I went to the meeting the other day. Um, I'm hoping it turns up so that, uh, I have a second sock, because uh, I don't want to knit a third. <laughs> um, anyhow, um, I will just move on to my spinning. Um, my, uh, I just finished this skein here. Um, it is, uh, Malabrigo Iris, the noob. Um, it's a merino... This is 100% merino. I can't remember. Uh, yeah, 100% merino. Um, I love the colors of this. I'm super excited. Uh, Andrea Mowry has just uh, announced her um, spin it to knit it that she is starting. Um, and she also has a knit along for her traveler series. So thinking I will hit two at once and knit up the traveler cowl in my hand spun. I have some other, some BFL that I spun up as well that uh, I won't show you now because it's all wrapped already. Um, and yeah, I'm thinking I will mix the two and I'm also in the middle of spinning up some beautiful, um, I don't, where is it? It's from South America, I believe. Um, and it's also a merino. I will put in a photo of it here so you can see. Um, it's it's a really neat purpley blue color and I'm thinking they will combine really nicely in the Traveler. So, so that's on my agenda. Um, also, I just purchased uh, this, this silk linen blend. Um, there is a local dyer here in Kelowna, BC. Um, she's uh, Fat, Fat Marmot um, is the name of her, her company. And she had an in-store sale at our local yarn store, Kelowna Yarn and Needlecraft. And I went and I purchased this and I'm hoping that I can use it for the flower tank, um, our flower, I think it's called flower tank put that in there too but i started making that last year and i hadn't gauge swatched properly for it and it was turning out massive and i ended up frogging it so i still have the pattern it's paid for and i'm hoping that that will be the next thing going on to my needles so that's it for uh this episode um i hope you have a good month of march uh february just flew by i mean it always does because it's a short month but uh yeah so far 2024 is just like psh, lightning speed <laughs> uh, so yeah have a good month of march i will